okay what, what is an what is an optimal what is the optimal focus operator right, uh, right nobody knows what is the optimal focus operator no one knows okay no one knows okay but then you know what i mean if you if you ask yourself right you might say that i, mean, I should still have a way i should still have some way by which by which actually i should be i should be able to use all these all these operators together is is there a possibility to to kind of use it correct you can always ask that thing no see right now it looks like you just apply an operator you get some d bar use that operator everywhere same operator and then you have a depth map but then right since we know that there is not just one operator there are so many of them and also right even let's say within each operator there are, there is this kind of a variation for example if you look, if you look at some modified laplacian we could have taken an average uh, by taking n equal to 0 that means we simply we simply look at the modified laplacian value at that pixel or we could have taken n equal to 1 which means we sum up the values in a kind of a 3 cross 3 neighborhood we could have taken n equal to 5 then we will get a 5 cross 5 neighborhood and you will notice that for each one of them right you will get you know you will get a value of d bar which could be changing for example if i take n equal to 0 it might it might say that right your you see d bar is this if i take if i take uh, if i take an average of 3 cross 3 values of ml it may say that your d bar is now this if i take a 5 cross 5 it may say that your see right d bar is something else now which one of these should i pick i do not know a priori which one of these is correct and then again if i go to another operator it might say that your see d bar is that now it could be that it could be that right? they may not be too far away from each other but there are these see multiple multiple values that will show up if you try to use different operators or even the same operator applied at applied with, uh, with let's say varying sizes and so on right so you can see that right, you almost can can get a sort of you know a cloud of cloud of values for a d bar for at each pixel by the way i'm talking about cloud of values for for a d bar correct you know that there is a framework called which is actually a tensor voting framework So for those of you who are interested you can go read about it there's something called a tensor voting framework this is not this is not anything related to uh, this problem or anything right tensor voting has been around for a long time and this kind of a voting framework right this is based upon what are called what is called a gestalt gestalt principles of human perception okay so so this so this kind of a tensor voting framework is something that will actually that will actually mimic mimic this okay human p- p- perception okay <coughs> what that actually means is so you know there are about 6 uh, 7 of these principles okay some of them right i'll tell you so, so one of them is like uh, is like what is called what is called see smoothness okay which, which i said you know which is some which is like a generic prior so for example right uh, so for example if you if you uh, right i mean you know you know, you know right if you, if you say that right should i should, should i should i choose a curve like this over a curve like that right it it rather it rather go for something like that which is more smooth okay in terms of uh, curvature right here you have a sharper curvature here you have a you have a kind of a reduced curvature so it will try to typically go for go for go for something that is that is kind of locally more smooth then there is something called uh, called you know a continuity or uh, okay symmetry all okay, right the next is something like symmetry so what this means is that right i mean if i have uh, right i mean think of think of something like this right if i have on this side and on this side right i have this then then humans typically would would uh, right would tend to think that there should have been something like that so the symmetry is, is something that that we sort of inherently believe that believe it exists in the world okay i mean see right it doesn't mean that you blindly enforce this tensor voting is smart right? it doesn't mean that it will directly go and enforce all this but then look for these things okay it's a framework that will sort of account that will that will try to incorporate all these factors into it so 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 yeah so with symmetry is something like that if you see uh, right if you see something right in an image then and then if there is a partial information about the same object elsewhere then we want to believe that probably this the whole object exists there right so it's like some kind of a symmetry that you expect then uh, what else is there then there is uh, there is a closure okay closure means that i mean right if i gave you a, you know gave you something like that right i mean you would you would want to get to see close this and right? you would think that you know that is how probably this object should have been that's the way our human mind works okay we tend to we tend to look for things you know that are that are more kind of say pleasing to the eye or that we feel that we feel should ideally probably exist in this world so we tend to kind of close or for example right, if, if i gave you something like this right then then you would think that oh you know right in between something should have existed probably you missed it right and you and you, and you would try to kind of say close all those gaps right closure is one thing then there is then there is a continuity 
right? Continuity basically means that right, I mean, if, if, if I gave you, a, gave you a bunch of dots like that, right? You would, you would think that, oh, this probably was a line. Again, right? These are all things that we, that we kind of self-impose, right? We don't, we don't kind of explicitly say these things, but then implicitly we do this. Okay, somebody shows something, then implicitly we are kind of filling in all the blanks, right? And, and these blanks we are, we are filling in typically based upon things that, we, that, that are more, more or less rational. Symmetry, smoothness, closure, continuity, okay, things like that. So this, so this tensor voting, right, is such framework. And then one more thing. Suppose I tell you, it can even be, it can be, it can even be used for kind of, you know, what do you call? Uh, you used to kind of say remove outliers. So for example, if I gave you points like this, right, and suppose I gave you, uh, gave you a few points like that, which are outliers, and uh, and so suppose I asked, right, you know, you try to construct construct a surface or construct a curve out of this that is meaningful, then it is very likely that very likely that you as a human will, will kind of draw a circle through that and then, then ignore everything. Oh, okay, I did not draw it correctly. Okay. Ah, where was this point? One minute. Right? Let me draw it properly. So, what it will mean is, so when you see this, right, you will end up kind of drawing a circle through these points and you will say that, okay, right, if, I, if I had to, if I had to, if I had to visualize an object through this, right, that would be the object and then say the rest of the points for me are all outliers. So that's like noise, okay, which you would tend to ignore. This is not true that we kind of tend to do these kind of things. Right? I mean, I, so you will automatically knock off some of those points, right? Because you are again implicitly looking for some sort of a structure there, right? Which, which should be regular, and so on. So all these things, right? So this tensor voting framework is something that actually that can that can do all of this using the terms like what is called the saliency map. So it has something like a curve saliency, structure saliency, surface saliency, and so on. Okay. So the so so what have what uh, right what what can be done is you can actually throw all these d bar values so for example right if you if you say that see for example again right let me kind of uh, let me tell you that you can uh, you can also use it to close right uh, like i told you so what can happen is if i have something like that and for this point right if there are if there are multiple multiple options available to me suppose suppose right say let's say one operator says that this should be the value another says that should be the value another says this should be the value another says this should be the value now what will happen is this guy with this guy will look at the look at the local neighborhood and try to see right which one of these is, is most meaningful to pick so in the sense that right in, the, in this case right it will say that probably right this is the one that that you should go with rather than this or this or this or this or that okay, because that would be the one which will probably meet these meet these CC principles so the locally smooth right it does not introduce introduce a curvature that is that is very harsh Okay, and then you know it looks like there is a there is a, a symmetry going on. So all that it will automatically incorporate to be able to to be able to pick the one that it thinks is most suitable. Okay, so what has been done is so this so the tensor voting framework. Right, I don't I don't have that paper. One of my actually M Tech students, right, he did this work. So we actually showed that right, you don't have to stop with one operator. Even we do not know which is the best operator, but we said at least you have a you have a say mechanism by which you can throw in multiple operators right into the scheme and for every everything right you can do you can look for say multiple multiple values of d bar and then use the neighborhood information and then do this kind of a tensor voting framework in, you know, in order to be able to pick the final value so all that so right i mean we, we are not interested in going into the full details and all of that I'm just saying that don't think that uh, well we are stuck with just one operator or something right if you if you're, if you're, if you're you know willing to put in more work then we can actually accommodate more operators, right? We don't have to. We don't have to shy away from that. We can take as many operators as we want. We can operate them at as at as many sizes as we want. Come up with come up with all these right different votes for a for a, this one particular value, and then see right which which one of them is most likely. Okay, so basically this is all possible. Uh, so right, let me just talk about the pros and cons of SFF. Okay. So the pros and cons. Okay, so, so the uh, so the first is the strength. The this the strength is that it is it is it is very fast. It is very fast. I mean, implemented in its fundamental form, in the basic form. Okay, not with all this tensor voting and all that. Okay, it is very fast. I mean, not with the parallax kicking in and all that. Okay, uh, very fast. And. A parallelizable, parallelizable. Okay, so it means that you can compute d power independently of of let's say other locations, right? You can run this entire operator, do the interpolation everywhere independent of the of the other. So if you have a GPU or something with multiple cores, then you could just run it all in parallel. Then two, very important, it does not assume 
Oh, okay. Yeah, these are advantages, of course. It does not assume knowledge of the PSF. What does this stand for? A PSF? Eh? Correct. Right. A, a point spread function. So it means that right, so so we don't so nowhere did we assume that uh, the underlying blur is actually a Gaussian and so on. The one that we simulate for you is a Gaussian because that is what we can do at uh, in the lab. But I'm saying nowhere in these in this ring or in this uh, whatever right that Baba's face or that uh, lion thing and you know, nowhere did we assume anything right. So all that all that we say is where does this point appear in focus? That is all we are interested in. We are not interested in knowing what could be the Gaussian. Is it Gaussian? Is it non-Gaussian? We, we don't care. It's also that way. It's, it's a very good thing. So right, it doesn't it doesn't assume anything about the knowledge of the point spread function. Then three, mm, these two are obvious ones. Uh, it can yield an estimate of the focused image using, of course, d bar estimate of the focused image of the underlying focused image. underlying focused image then yeah I think these are the main ones the ones right that uh, so so these are drawbacks right if you look at it the weaknesses weaknesses are there okay so one is uh, the one weakness is uh, it can go wrong at places at places with less texture okay which means that within an image wherever you find that there is not much activity it can go wrong because then all your d bar and all right you will you will not get a get a nice gaussian fit and then right, you will not know your know your d bar exactly okay will have uh, will have issues at depth edges or what is called what is called a discontinuity because you know if you are sitting right at the edge right then your focus operator is like half of it is on this side half of it is on the other side where the, where the depth is suddenly falling if it is a smoothly varying thing then it is okay but if there is a sudden change in depth right then at those locations it will take a little while to recover right because somewhere I mean you know somewhere you will be kind of half here and half there. And then the and then of course choice of delta I mean that is not a weakness okay choice of delta f I will just put this here choice of uh, delta d right so that somebody okay this should be greater than d o f okay they are not equal to okay at least this okay d o f is a depth of field. Then uh, window size of operators is, is ad hoc unless you use something like tensor routing. Again when I say all this, this is for the basic SFF. Window size is ad hoc, is chosen in an ad hoc manner and then needs a telecentric setup again in the basic form. This, this should have come in fact, uh, in fact you know, right in the beginning. Okay, so some advantages, some drawbacks, right, and uh, and that is it, right, as far as as far as this method is concerned.